Nation. The hobby is the people. Weekly news and interviews. It's your number one source. Sports Card Nation. The hobby is the people. Sports Card Nation. Welcome to another stocked and loaded episode of the Sports Card Nation podcast. The show that brings you all the important hobby news, discussions, debates, opinions, info, and interviews with key hobby and sports dignitaries. Also, if you're good, you know we are going to give away something. Now, here's the guy that wanted the cards more than the gum. John Newman. Here's Johnny. What is up? Episode 90 of the Sports Car Nation podcast, the Big 90, and the Big 90 show. We have a great guest. Uh, you can't do episode 90 and not have a great guest. Our guest today is none other than hobby veteran, hobby legend, if you will, Susan LeJudai, affectionately known as Suze from Beckett Days and more recently. Uh, the face of tops, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it. And uh, I'll say this, I think tops misses her. Uh, she might not say it. I'll say it for her. But, uh, you know, she did great things there. She's moving on in her career. A lot of people don't realize she was a sports writer for a while uh, as well. And she So she comes from the sports side. We'll talk a little bit about that with her today. And, uh, you know, you may have heard me go on a rant a few weeks back uh on the new money term that I'm not fond of. And we'll uh, we'll also talk about that and kind of clear the air. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what I thought. It wasn't meant in a derogatory way. uh, It's still not my favorite saying, but uh, uh, it is what it is. It's also a poker term, and she plays poker. I play poker. So uh, all is well. uh, That ends well. I was glad to have Suze on the show. Like me, she's a fellow New Yorker. Uh, so I don't know. It's funny. My son, when I told my son who I was going to have on the show this week, he's like, you seem to gravitate to all your New York City, uh, you know, folks. And, uh, you know, he's he was born here in Syracuse, uh, where I was born in Brooklyn. And, you know, until he said it, I never really thought about it. But, yeah, we've had a lot of folks on from uh, the city. It's my home. It's my home city. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I don't know if that was scripted like that, but uh, I seem to gravitate that way just sort of naturally. So uh, happy to have fellow New Yorker Suze on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, her career, uh, her career at Tops, uh, what she's doing now, the card chat, which is very uh, cool and, and strikes up great uh, topics and conversations uh, in this great hobby. So, without further ado, let's get this thing kick started. It has begun! Time for this week's Incoming! product releases. All right, no shortage of releases this week. Truth be told, 13 in total, lucky number 13. Starting with uh, today of, re- of the release of the show, which is 821. You're going to get three releases today if you're listening to this on show date. 2020 Leaf Trinity Football. 2020 Panini NFL 5 Trading Card Game Booster. And 2020 Panini Immaculate Baseball. On the 26th, uh, a heavy release day. Uh, looks like about uh, six to seven items. Tops 5 Star Baseball 2020, 2020 Tops UFC, 2020 Tops WWE Raw vs. SmackDown, 2019-20 Panini Contenders Optic Basketball, and 2020 Panini Immaculate Collegiate Football, also 2020-21 Upper Deck MVP Hockey, 2020 Panini Black Football, 2020 Upper Deck Marvel Anime, and two to close out the month on the 28th, 2020 Leaf Best of Multisport Premium Edition, and 2020 Leaf Valiant Football. So 13 items in total, a busy week to close out the month of August. Coffee's for closers only. Sports. 
Sports Card Nation podcast is your weekly hobby and sports podcast. Now on tons of platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. Listen to in 44 different countries globally, Sports Card Nation is one of the most interactive podcasts around, providing great content, giveaways, and some of the hobby's best interview guests without time constraints. Thousands can't be wrong. We want to thank all the wonderful listeners around the world, our awesome guests on the show, and our tremendous sponsors making us what we are today. Remember, without you, there's no us. It's time for What's Cracking. All right, let's start with some news on the PSA grading front. Actually, two stories in one. Uh, The first is PSA is banning or blocking uh, accounts. Uh, You know, there's two sides to that story. Uh, A lot of the accounts that are getting blocked are are complaining that it's happening because they're outspoken against PSA. And PSA's stance is that those sites or or folks are being blocked because they are tampering or doctoring or cleaning cards and they don't want that. So I guess it depends who you believe. Maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle, but... uh, you know, really, truthfully, not a great look for a PSA because everyone that's getting blocked is making a public spectacle of it. And so while it may be legitimate, I don't know. It's just a bad look uh, to me. Even even if it is justified, it just looks like all these mass bannings just, just doesn't smell good. So on one hand, they're blocking an account, and on the other hand, they're looking to add employees. So if you're interested in working for PSA, attend their virtual job fair online. It is taking place Tuesday, the 25th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's Pacific time. PSA President Steve Sloan says we've hired more than 50 people since the pandemic began and we're not even close to being finished. They are looking for card graders, customer service reps, customer service specialists, coordinators for the PSA set registry, operations manager, quality control verifier, receiver, research specialist, senior account manager, and sealers. So if you want to work for PSA, there's some openings Tuesday the 25th. Speaking of jobs, what kind of job is USPS doing for you? There's some uh, reported slowdowns in delivery time. So people are reporting that their stuff is taking way longer than it should to get to them. And shippers are reporting the same thing, that packages they are sending out are not getting there in the allotted time. And uh, we all know, uh, unless you live under a rock, that there's some issues uh, with the United States Postal Service being uh, in financial trouble and a uh, little uh, you know, game of chicken going on between them and President Trump uh, saying they need a bailout and he's saying he's not going to give them one and so uh, they're having trouble getting stuff uh, to places on time. Now I'm going I do a lot of shipping, I do a lot of receiving. Uh, that's just just the truth. Uh, maybe I'm lucky. I'll knock on wood here. Um, I haven't experienced any kind of delays on on either side of that uh, at this point, and I hope uh, hope that remains the case. But I mean, this stuff's making the news. They're holding press conferences, and so um, you know, hopefully this uh, will work out. You know, every year they they raise their rates, stamps go up. It seems like like a nickel. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, you, you know, it's, uh, the, you know, if the U- United States Postal Service is in trouble, that does not bode well for the hobby. Yes, there are alternatives uh, to United States Postal Service to get your stuff there. UPS, 
uh, FedEx, amongst uh, other couriers. But, I mean, you United States Post Office is the standard bearer. So, uh, hopefully, cooler heads prevail and uh, all's well that ends well. Beckett Media is getting into the supplies business. They have partnered with Dragon Shield Gaming Supplies. And uh, Dragon Shield Gaming Supplies is going to produce a line for Beckett of, you know, top loader sleeves and sports card supplies. Uh, the, the new product uh, name will be Beckett Shield. So Ultra Pro, BCW, uh, there's some other smaller, uh, you know, supply companies. Uh, there's a new kit on the block, but they're not really new. Beckett Shield, with the help of Dragon Shield, is throwing their hat into the supply-making ring. All I'll say is this. As we all know, supplies are crazy priced right now, especially during the pandemic. And uh, got to give up your firstborn son to get uh, a couple packs of top loaders or semi-rigids. And uh, hopefully, although I, I have my doubts, uh, maybe this new partnership will uh, result to some of those prices coming down. Time for our weekly Mike Trout 101 Rookie 2009 Bowman Chrome Super Fractor Auto at Golden's Auctions update. Uh, last week at this time it was at $1,450,000. And guess what? A week later we are still at that number. There is one at the time that I'm, I'm taping this. There is one day and 23 hours left. This auction will end at Saturday. Most likely when you're hearing this, that number may be higher as the auction draws to a close. Uh, will there be a flurry at the end? I'm going to guess uh, some sort of flurry uh, will happen on Saturday. Uh, most likely we'll put this card over the $2 million mark and set the modern day record for highest total for a single card some people are predicting it will hit the three million dollar mark i don't know if i'm going to venture a guess i'm going to say yes to the two million no to the three million but you know how this hobby year has been stuff just gets crazier and crazier so we may see our first three million dollar card on to tops they are producing this will be in the winter time their first foray into the Formula One card market. So there will be Formula One cards produced by Tops in the wintertime. While we're on the subject of Tops, let's talk about the Tops Project 2020. I haven't really kind of injected my own personal opinion in a while. I know I've had a majority of the artists on. We've had about half the artists of the 20 on the show. Uh, still efforting to get uh, some that haven't been, but uh, some are, are not uh, anxious to talk as, as others are. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm I, while I'm a fan of the project and I have quite a few of the cards, uh, you know, things have sort of settled down and cooled off. Print runs are coming down. And many of the cards are actually selling for less than what you can get them through Tops Direct. And so a lot of people are, rather than buying them from Tops, are going to the secondary markets and paying, you know, $10, $12, $14 for these releases. And I think, in a sense, it sort of brought the print runs down which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the, I think the bad part is some opinions have changed on the project. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more negative from people, a lot more nastiness uh, from people that the project uh, stinks or, you know, they're, they're anxious towards Tops because Tops is using uh, different one-touches, different brands, they're not uniform, uh, they're all over the board. Shipping is behind, although Tops is catching up. Uh, QC issues with hair and other things inside the cases. The cases themselves being scratched up. The stickers being uh, coming off or ripped. Cards being 
put in the cases upside down or the wrong way. And I've even seen it where the ad card from the One Touch is still left in the uh, One Touch. Uh, so you can't see the back of the Project 2020 card. I've even heard of uh, a few Project 2020 cards without the, the back print in general. Uh, just not printed. And so a lot of QC issues at tops. Not a good look. I know the artists are taking that a little bit of the brunt of that. That kind of stuff is not on the artist folks. So, you know, you can yell and scream all you want at them. There's nothing they can do. Matter of fact, I know some of the artists are unhappy with tops themselves and have kind of reached out to tops to, you know, say, come on, let's let's get this right. So you know, it's funny, I, I, I asked earlier in the project, you know, I, I or I said earlier in the project, I really hope there's not a 2021. Not because I didn't think the project was a, a great idea or doing well. I just know the Tops MO is to kind of beat a dead horse, you know, beat things into the ground. But I, I, you know, what's going on and some of the, the hits they're taking here, uh, even if they were planning on doing a 2021, I think they're going to uh, uh, definitely uh, backtrack on that. I think uh, the look that we're getting now with the 2020 project is not bode well to see a 2021 project, even if they were thinking about it. And now I'm also seeing, you know, if you're on the message boards or the Project 2020 boards, you, you see a lot of this information and rants and, and whatnot, and complaints. You know, a lot of people are complaining about you know, the artists are doing their own sign cards or companion cards. And it's sort of 50-50 on what I'm seeing there myself. You know, people either praising the artist and uh, great work or people complaining uh, that they didn't get their companion cards or sign cards, that it's taking too long. I've seen complaints uh, with uh, the boxes that these companion cards come in. They were shown something else and got a uh, a cheaper variation of the box, and they weren't happy. And so it's a lot of so, sort of the winds kind of coming out of the sails. I, I hate to say it uh, like that. I'm hasn't changed my approach to the project, which has really been pretty much the same at this point. I uh, buy the Jackie Robinsons, and I buy other cards that do it for me on the I test you know I look at the car and say man that's well done I want to own some of those and you know I buy a few two three four and that's it of 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 that car that that moves my meter you know which is you know I I don't know how many cards I got I got about two shoe boxes worth of uh, tops 2020 project I have not sold any uh, you know, any of I bought, I buy them direct from Tops, and I buy them uh, on the secondary market as well. So uh, any I've bought, I, I either have in hand and haven't sold, or I haven't got them yet. So uh, with shipping delays, and so uh, again, the project has really kind of settled down. It's cooled off, is probably the best way to put it, and we're just halfway through. I think. Fatigue is setting in, I, not so much maybe on the, with the artists themselves, but I think fatigue has set in with the buyers and fans. Not Again, not all. My approach hasn't changed. I, I like the way a card looks. I buy it. Jackie Robinson's, I buy it. But I, you know, not everyone is buying uh, under those cir circumstances. Some are buying to sell them, to flip them, and those folks are definitely... Uh, have either left the building or are in the process of heading to the exits. And so uh, the tone has changed. And some people have gotten nastier with it. And again, uh, you know, I think a lot of that's more on tops. But, you know, others are complaining about the companion cards taking too long. They're not packaged well. You know, this is nothing you can do. But uh, I've seen other complaints saying, like, the companion cards are selling for less than they paid on the secondary market than they paid from the artist. And so they're a little burnt, uh, you know, bent out of shape over that. And so there's just, there just seems to be a little bit more nastiness 
lately when it comes to the project you know uh, itself and when you look at where they are in the project they are literally at the halfway mark card around card 200 with a 400 card release and this thing i'm you know for lack of a better way of putting it is losing a little steam and it'll be interesting to see halfway through if they can you know get that steam going again or how this thing uh finishes and so uh you know again i like the work i like the premise but i'm one person uh and uh not everyone thinks uh the same way i do which is probably a, a good thing in itself but uh so we're coming down we're at the halfway mark let's see where this project goes and what's what's around the next corner We love our listeners. Without you, there is no us. We care about your opinions and feedback and invite you to reach out to us on any of our social media accounts. On Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast. Twitter at Sports Card N-A-T-I-1. Or email the show at SportsCardNationPC at gmail.com. We don't ask for much, but if you really like the show, give us a shout out. Tell your friends or give us a follow on our social medias. If you enjoy the show, please give us a positive review on iTunes or any of the platforms you are listening on. Thank you. Oh, I know the chunky that left these chunkies. <laughs> Newman! Open the door, Newman. I know you're in there. Hello, Jerry. All right. It's time for Newman's Rambling, where I select one question I get each week, and answer it on the air. John, you seem like an astute man. Thank you, Mr. Walken. Maybe you can help explain something to me. Well, I'll give it my best shot. All right, I'm going to go with a question today that was actually asked by two or three people of me uh, once the National announced that the rescheduled date in Atlantic City the week before Christmas was not going to be a go as well, and now we are... Uh, on the clock for Chicago, uh, late July, August 2021. And so the question I got asked a, a few times was, what effect, if any, will the canceled national have on the hobby? And it's a good question. Uh, I'm Obviously, I'm going to answer it. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, you know, the hobby right now is just at, uh, uh, you know, dare I say, an all-time high. I mean, sales are just... Uh, through the roof, uh, lots of transactions, lots of activity, lots of new people uh, in the hobby itself. And, uh, you know, I, I really don't think, as crazy as it might sound, and as great an event as the National is, it's the Super Bowl of the hobby, as I coined it, if you will. Um, but as great as it is, you know, and but the hobby's at, at a crazy level, during pandemic times, I don't think, you know, sure, I'm, I'm going to miss the National. I'm, I'm disappointed. I was go, had the whole week off, was planning to be there the, the whole week on the original date. And uh, obviously that wasn't going to uh, be uh, what's going on with COVID-19. Um, but uh, I, I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, the, the hobby's not going to crash uh, or go down because you know, one big show didn't occur. And it, it's a it's a huge loss as far, as far as the event itself goes. But again, it's not the end. I mean, the National is going to uh, come back again, and it's going to be in Chicago, uh, you know, in the end of July. So uh, we just count down the days uh, to that and look forward to that. But as far as what stuff's going for and selling for, I, I, the fact that the National is not occurring in the calendar 2020 year is not going to affect that. Now, now listen, it's a, it's a week out of the year. and Transactions are happening every day and, uh, on, and, and mostly online. Let's, you know, you know, if I, if I put online transactions to in-store transactions, I, I don't, I don't know. This is just off the top of my head. I would probably say 80-20 online to, you know, brick and mortar, uh, frankly. And, uh, you know, uh, 
those transactions are going to still occur. Those transactions would occur the week that the national was taking place uh, as well, and and so uh, I I think it's it's almost going to be business as usual. I think there'll be disappointed people. I, I count myself among those, but uh, the business is going to go on. Hobby life is going to go uh, on as well, and uh, people are going to buy cards. People are going to sell cards, trade cards, open wax, buy online exclusives, buy vintage, buy modern. That stuff's not coming to a stop. The earth is still uh, rotating on its axis. And, uh, you know, and I just wanted to say that because I learned that in science class in high school way back in 1989, 1990. And I wasn't sure I'd ever get to use it again. Here we are. It took 29 years, but I got to use it. Uh, thank you, science teachers. Uh, too many of you to name uh, individually, plus I don't remember all your names. But, uh, you know, uh, life's going to go on. We're going to not have a, a national in 2020. Yes, it stinks. I get it. I'm, I'm among the disappointed as someone who had reservations all set and plans. And, uh, you know, but we just got to look forward uh, to 2021, uh, you know. And uh, it's like I said uh, on Hobby Hotline the other day is, you know, it gives you more time. What we're we're here in uh, August, and so we got eleven months in a sense to save up more money to bring to the show. You know, build up your your trade arsenal if you go to trade nights, and if you're a seller, it gives you eleven more months to acquire inventory, maybe some big uh, high end cards to throw in those showcases uh, uh, to have on display. And the show itself, you know, uh, the, the powers that be, you're going to have 11 months to really get their ducks in a row, uh, get your, your autograph guests all squared away. And frankly, I think 2021 in Chicago is going to be the biggest national ever. I'm going to go on record and say that. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way, but you got a lot of new people in the hobby that are here to stay, like it or not. I know some people are not fond of that. I, I'm not amongst them. I, I'm open arms to all people in the hobby, as long as you're doing the right thing. And so we're going to have the most probably people in the hobby we've had in a long time. I think many are going to be, like me last year, are going to be attending their first national, along with all the diehards and people that go every year. And I think I think the attendance record is going to be broken. I think the money uh, is going to be sp well spent there, you know. Uh, I think we'll, at least, I mean, I hope Jeepers, 11 months from now, I hope we're, we're post-pandemic. Or if, if in the very least, really, really uh, almost past it, if not past it. And people are going to be itching, you know. You, you without the Super Bowl, the hobby for a year, uh, and then you... You know, you lose it for a year, so it's going to be the first one in a sense two years. It's going to be a lot of anticipation, a, a lot of, um, you know, people ready to get back in that building. Uh, Chicago's a well-liked venue, if you read what people say. And uh, as, as someone who was there myself uh, last year, was uh, very well done in a great area. And so... Uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be uh, record-setting uh, and be one that's talked about for quite a while after the fact. I think everyone's going to be itching for it. Dealers, attendees, even probably the autograph uh, uh, guests as well. You know, they, they've taken a hit. You know, we forget that a lot of these retired athletes kind of supplement their income with these appearances. And so... The pandemic's kind of squashed that, and they're, they're probably itching and rearing to go uh, as well. And so I think it's going to be much anticipated, very anxious people, uh, excited to, to have it again. You know, it's one of those things, like the cliche goes, you don't know what you have until it's gone. And it was gone for a year, and now we're going to get it back in, in you know, July slash August of 2021. I'm looking forward to it. I'm planning to be there, and uh, I hope to see uh, some of you folks there. 
uh, obviously as well. So, hey folks, tired of going to the retail store and finding the wax shelves cleaned out bare? I've got the answer for you, and that answer is Hotbox Cards. They offer a monthly subscription service at a great price level. What's better than getting a box of sports cards on your doorstop every month? Not a whole lot, and these boxes don't cost a whole lot. Let me tell you what's in each and every hot box. Three Relic or Auto cards, three unopened hobby packs, 50 bonus cards featuring stars, rookies, semi-stars, inserts, and parallels. And one in every five boxes has a red hot envelope with a surprise card. They also honor expired redemptions with a comparable item. So there's no worry about getting that old redemption card with nothing to show for it. Check them out at www.hotboxcards.net and put in promo code SCNATION. SCNATION, all in caps, to save even a little bit more money. Happy to have my next guest join the one-on-one card shop guest line. She's a, a hobby veteran uh, is probably uh, the best way to put it. She's wore many hats. She was uh, a sports writer. Uh, she's worked uh, for Beckett as a managing editor. Uh, many know her from her days at Tops as marketing communications manager. And so she's, again, wore many hats. Uh, she's well-known in the hobby, and uh, I'm glad she's made time for Sports Car Nation uh, welcome, Susan Lugia Day. Hi, and thanks for having me on. You know, I know I talked to you a few months ago. I know you're very busy, uh, so I, I appreciate you uh, you coming on. Uh, like I said in the intro, you've wore uh, many different hats in, in, in the industry and in, in your professional career from sports writer, marketing side, creative side. You know, I hate to put you on the spot. If you, or if you like, is, is one thing, is there, if you only could do one thing and you had to pick one thing, it, what what would you say is is something you enjoy the most? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we're both in agreement there. Um, you know, I know you think like if I could pick one, I guess it really depends on you know where I am in my life. Cause yeah. That's kind of how my career sort of progressed. So, you know, back in my you know my twenties and early thirties, you know, there was nothing more than I wanted to be a sports writer, and I did that. And as life sort of changed and other, you know, things happened, you know, I wanted not to travel as much, not to work at, at night as much, um, you know, wanted to have a family. Being a sports writer isn't really conducive to a lot of that, mm-hmm. especially if I wanted to, you know, participate in my child's life. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I did other things, but, you know, I feel like at the end of the day, as long as whatever I'm doing, as long as I get to be creative yeah. um, and express myself, then I'm good with what I'm doing. Yeah. No, that's that's great. Like you said, yeah, as you you know, as your career progresses, you you do different things. You you like it uh, for that time period, and it, it makes sense. I think a lot of people uh, can can relate to that. You were at Tops for five years. You know, most people. I don't know if you feel this way. Felt you were the. the I know I did. Uh, you can tell me I'm wrong, but you were sort of the face of, of Tops. You were sort of that uh, out front there. Did you did you realize? Did you know that yourself? And was and if that's the case, is there any pressure that goes along uh, with that? You know, I you know I did realize that. Um, um, I feel like especially with among like core hobbyists, I'll call them, because you know from my days of having the blog and then working at Beckett, I was always I've always been a part of the community, even just as a collector. So it wasn't even a, it wasn't even about just working at Tops. Um, so then when I went to Tops. I mean, the role was about that, though. It was, you know, I'm on, I'm the social media person, and I'm doing PR. So, you know, the role was fit for that to be the sort of voice and the face of yeah. Fox at the time. And it was okay. I enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie. I like, I like a little bit of attention at times. <laughs> sure. So I was okay with it. Um, and it was fun because I got to, you know, through that role, I got to meet so many new collectors that I hadn't met before, and I got to, you know, become friendly with like 
store owners and distributors and people I may not have met otherwise. And, you know, I, as much as potentially I want to say Tops benefited from that because, you know, here's somebody who, you know, they had as a, a collector who was, you know, sharing the hobby. I benefited so much as well because I got to meet so many different people. You're a New Yorker. I'm originally from Brooklyn. I know we spoke a little bit before we, we went on the air. Uh, you're from the Bronx. I mean, to both of us who are in into the cards, even before you, you worked at Tops, Tops is just iconic from someone from New York. It's a New York City company. I mean, what was that like, you know, that first day uh, or when you knew you were going to be uh, working for Tops? You know, uh, I can only imagine what that feeling's sort of like being uh, from New York and, and a card collector yourself, too. Yeah, I mean, I sort of freaked out a little bit <laughs> when, they, when they called and gave me, said, you know, gave me an offer for a position. Um, I was over the moon. You know, it was, I had previously applied to a job at Tops like years before that, mm -hmm. and it, it didn't happen. Like, I did speak to somebody at the time, and like, it just wasn't the fit. You know, I wasn't the fit they were looking for, which is fine. Like, that happens, and it's okay. Um, so the fact that, like, I got another chance and another opportunity, and then, you know, some this wonderful situation happened. I was I was over the moon. Like I was so excited, and I, I like as a collector, it's you it's like it's so hard to even like as somebody who uses words for a living. It's even hard to just put into words. Because <laughs> yeah. You can't imagine the fact that like here I am. This is the thing I love. Like I'm a hobbyist. I love collecting cards. I have created, my best friend is a card collector, my yeah. husband is a card collector, like, here are my relationships, I have this strong, cards are such a strong part of my relationships, now my job is going to be about cards, um, and it did not, and you know, it was, it was for some people, like, it may have, it did not ruin cards for me either, you know, it was exciting and exhilarating, and I remember being there and just wanting to soak up as much information as I can because, you know, as a collector, you have so many questions. Like, why does this happen? Why do they do it this way? Why can't they do this? Why can't, you know, it's like you, you think you have all the answers because as a collector, you see one side of it and you think you have, like, answers as to, like, why, you know, why can't the checklist be out earlier or why yeah. are the same pictures used again or why... Um, you know, if whatever the question is, and then you get the answer, and you're like, oh, that makes sense. You, yeah. <laughs> so I may not love the answer either, but from a business standpoint, and I think some people need to realize, like, at the end of the day, Tops is still a business. Yep. It makes sense. Yeah. Now, obviously, you worked there. You were on the inside. I'm not uh, going to ask you for any secret recipes or anything uh, you can't say. I know uh, I'm, on, I'm on the outside just as a, 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 a you know, a media a collector and, and, and someone who sells cards themselves. The, the thing we always hear is, you know, with Tops is they don't they don't have enough card people uh, in, in their you know, uh, as employees. In other words, it's too corporate or, or the people don't know, they're not on the ground level. I don't think that applies to you. Uh, I think you've, uh, you know, demonstrated you know cards, you, you love cards, you have a passion for it. Um, but, you know, at the time you were only one person. What do you say to that rap? I know you're not there now, but uh, number one, I guess, did you ever hear that? And and what was what's your take on, on that? Um, I, I, I have heard that, and I think it was something before I started working at Tops. I might have also fell into that um, sort of mindset as well, because, yeah. like I said, there's things that maybe the card companies do that we're like, oh, as a real collector, you would never do that. <laughs> but in the reality is, like, there's reasons why things happen. Um, so I'm, so now, having worked there, I will respectfully disagree with that notion, yeah. because I've had, there's people even now who work at Tops who, I, you know, I'll pull a cool card, and they're like, that. so, you know, it's like they get excited about the cool cards, and just because, like, they're not on social media or on Twitter, like, talking about their job at Tops doesn't mean that they're not there, so I just think that they're just not as front-facing, you know, for Tops as some of the as other people are, and, you know, f from people for at the top, you know, at the top of the company, you know, maybe they're not specifically a collector right now, mm -hmm. but they were a collector at some point in their life. You know, like they 
had card collections, they had memorabilia collections, like, they still, they do get it, and, but, like I said, the other day, there's so, there's, it's a business, and there's people to answer, there's always somebody to answer to, no matter what job you have, and it's the same thing at that. Yeah, and this is going to be a compliment towards you, you know, you were always very vocal, out front, uh, passionate about not only cards, but uh, tops as well as an employee, and, you know, since you left, I know it's not been a long time, but I think, you know, that's sort of missing there. I mean, everyone has a different personality. Not everyone's, you know, cut from the same cloth, and, and that's a good thing, too. Uh, if we were all the same, that'd be no fun. Um, but I think sort of, you know, when you left, that that's those are big shoes to, to replace, if, if, if I can say. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be very difficult, and I think... Uh, the difference is is palpable. I mean, you know what I mean. I I know you don't want to say anything negative, but kind of what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, even hearing that. Um, I will take all and every compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. Um, but I also I, I I think you're right in the sense that it's just different. Yeah. I don't want to say it's any worse or it's any better. It's just different. You know, the priorities are different and I can't speak as to what they are now because I'm, I'm not there. Yeah. Um, I've been gone for roughly almost a year now, you know, I left in early September. So it's been almost a year. So in that year, you know, so many you know, things have changed, new personnel. Um, there's also a pandemic. So it's yeah. like, there's a lot yeah. of things happening that I, I, I couldn't even account for because I didn't have to experience it with tops, you know, like I, I like all the things they're going through, you know, they're based in New York City, as you know, New York yeah. City has been shut down for a long time. Yeah. So I can only imagine, like, the difficulties a lot of them are facing, and, you know, it's really tough. And I think, given their circumstances, they've done a pretty nice job of it. You know, I, will, I can 100% say that, because, you know, the Project 2020 came out during the whole thing when yeah. all this, everything started with the pandemic and people having to stay home. So I, I think that given the circumstances they've done a nice job i just think it's different and that's and that's all and that's really all it is like i don't I, you know obviously i still follow them and i still support them yeah. because at the end of the day i, I said this to people even while i was at tops so like what's gonna happen when you leave tops i'm like well if i ever leave tops and i actually did i was like i'm still a collector i was a collector before i was at tops i was a collector while i was at tops yeah. i'm a collector after tops and that's yeah. that's not gonna that's not gonna change yeah and the only thing that's probably changed is I get to, like, tweet more about, like, Panini and Upper Deck than I did before. <laughs> so, so I'm more of an equal opportunity card person now as opposed to just kind of focusing on tops. Yeah, that's a that's a, a great point there. And uh, another great point you made there, Suze, too, is, you know, it is a pandemic. We, we sort of got a, I don't want to say a complete free pass, but we definitely can't lose sight uh, that that that's a game changer. I mean, it, and and this is something we've never seen on, on this level before ever. You know, uh, you know, uh, the last time is like the Black Plague, and none of us uh, were a, around for that. And so this is uncharted war, waters, and um, you know, so you gotta we gotta keep that in mind when we're you know analyzing. Hey, they're doing a bad job or not a great job or whatever. We sort of gotta at least. Uh, equate that into the equation and so it's a good point uh you know uh made by you uh, I, you know I'm, I'm glad you said that not that i didn't know but sometimes hearing that you need to hear it because sometimes you forget in the moment and uh you know it, it's true so everyone that knows you uh even a little bit knows you you, you love Derek jeter uh no one could could argue that I know you got your start with, with uh, and you've said this uh, numerous times, and, and 91 Fleer was what kind of started it all for you. So you were in the cards, obviously, pre-Jeter, and I think I know what you're going to say. I don't I don't know the answer, but I, I got to guess in my own mind. So who was the guy, I'm assuming it was a Yankee, but who was the guy pre-Jeter? I mean, there's not many options, I mean, <laughs> at that point, so... Um, it was Don Madden. Like, yeah. He was the guy as a kid growing up that, you know, yeah. my brothers loved and I loved. Uh, you know, he was the face of the Yankees growing yeah. up. And that, that, you know, that was the guy. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm a Mets uh, guy. You can go ahead and laugh uh, uh, if you want. I was a Yankee fan. I know if people listen to shows that, John, we've heard this story many times. But I was a Yankee fan as a, a young kid in Brooklyn and and. 
it was the time burn. I'm older than you, so when when Steinbrenner was hiring and firing Billy Martin five times and and trading guys for one little slip up and signing anything that moved, and I kind of uh, George Steinbrenner he's a Hall of Famer, but for me as a younger fan, I sort of ruined it uh, for me. I'm like, man, this guy's just bigger than the play making himself bigger than the players and i had an issue with it and i kind of went to the mets and when i went to the mets they were the, the the worst team in baseball so no one can ever accuse me oh they won a world series and then you became i was when they were winning 50 games a year and losing 110 um but you know i even even not being a yankee fan uh, at the time period donnie baseball uh, like you said uh, you didn't have to be a yankee fan just the way he played the game and uh, did it the right way. I, I, I too, was uh, a Don Manley fan, while not necessarily uh, being a huge Yankee fan. He just was, uh, just did it the right way, and a uh, great player, obviously. Uh, probably should be in the Hall of Fame. That's a, could do a whole show probably uh, right there. You know, it's almost weird. I know he's he didn't just go to the Marlins. He's been there uh, four or five years. But I always envision him as always being a Yankee, being a coach, being a manager, uh, there, it's kind of weird seeing them even to this day. You know, with that with that Marlins gear on. Yeah, I mean, there's those kind of players who transcend sort of teams. You know, like who is not a Mike Trout fan? Like everybody loves Mike Trout, yeah. and like you know, I can certainly relate because um, while I'm a Yankees fan and I certainly do not like the Mets, I always liked <laughs> David Wright. You know, yeah. I, I always yeah. appreciated him and the way he played, and I was sad when like you know his career. His career, I mean kind of similarly ended the way that yeah, did was true. Like, you know with the injuries they kind of Caught up you know to. had had to retire probably sooner than they would have wished because of injuries yeah um, it, so it, yeah yeah so i appreciate you know, i appreciated david right as well yeah it's a great parallel you made between the two both sort of on track for a hall of fame career and then sidetracked by injuries that shorten their career which probably may keep them out uh, both of them out of the hall, unless maybe later on uh, the Veterans Committee uh, induct them. You know, hopefully they're you know both still around if that's the case to enjoy that that honor. And, and hopefully it happens. You know, I think they're both right there. I mean, I you know, I, I, some people could probably make an argument, nah, they shouldn't be in. But there's enough people that would argue that they should. So uh, if if it happens, uh, you know, it'd be nice uh, nice to see. Uh, as, as well so we're going to step aside for a quick break but when we come back Suze is going to talk about card chat pastime marketplace offers a line of durable graded card cases made for collectors who want high quality graded card storage that is virtually indestructible their cases are waterproof dust proof airtight and designed to protect your valuable collection check them all out at www dot pastime marketplace dot com protect your best with the best and remember to save fifteen percent off your order use the promo code SCN fifteen that's capital S capital C capital N fifteen for fifteen percent off your total order at pastime marketplace dot com sports card nation is back with Susan Lugida you know, card chat, a lot of people, it's huge. You got your newsletter. A lot of people don't realize, like, they think card chat's sort of new. You did that uh, back in your, your Beckett days. And then uh, when you went to Tops, you know, you, you had your hands full there and, and very busy. And now that, you know, you've kind of uh, brought it back to life. I think it's great. It's, you get that interaction on, on, on great topics. Um, you know, did you? You know, kind of speak to the dynamic of, you know, when you went to Tops, it kind of, you, you, you didn't do it or not as much. And then, you know, now you, you brought it back and, and what, what it does. Yeah, so, as you said, Car Chat started really when I was at Beckett. You know, it was um, a Twitter, started as a Twitter chat and still exists. Yeah. Um, but it was a way to engage readers, you know, people, you know, who would read Beckett. It was just a way to get people involved in the conversation around cards and issues affecting the hobby or just cards in general, whatever the topic may be that had to do with the hobby. Um, so it started now five, six, seven. So we could say like seven, eight years ago is when the Twitter chat of hashtag card chat yeah. started. Um, and I did it pretty regularly then. Um, yes, yeah, so when I went to Tops, it certainly was sporadic. Um, part of that was it was just very busy. 
I had them on, I think originally they were on Mondays, on Monday evening, and Monday evening turned out to be a really bad time for me. Yeah. Because I have it in my, like, my, I would have it in my calendar, like, every Monday at 7 o'clock, and I would get, <laughs> and I'm literally walking off the train, like, walking home, getting, because I would get home that late, getting an alert, like, oh, car chat starts in 10 minutes. I'm like, well, that's not happening tonight. <laughs> like, I don't have, I don't have time for this. Yeah. Um, but also, like I kind of like alluded to before, it was a little difficult to be an employee of Pops and be like, "Hey, tell me what you don't like about Panini." <laughs> you know, like I would, you know, it becomes <laughs> yeah. it becomes a sort of fine line you have to walk. Yeah. Um. So it became difficult, you know, because and even so, like it's like, oh my goodness, like redemptions are terrible. What's it? What's the worst? You know, what's the worst time you have? And people are like. Well, you know, I've been waiting three years for this tax card. Where is it? I'm like, I have no idea. Like, thanks for thanks for participating tonight in card chat. Yeah. You know, like next, you know, it's like it's that kind of thing. So it's like you know, I had it, it, it became this like really slippery sort of slope, and I had to be very careful. Not that anybody taught it. It's not that anybody told me to. It's not that anything yeah. like that. Just for my own self. Um, sort of a conflict you know, of interest a little bit. Exactly. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I was able to recognize that for myself Yeah. rather than, you know, having to need anybody to come like, hey, let's have a conversation about your Twitter. You know, <laughs> I, I didn't want to get to that point. So, I mean, for, for better or for worse, it kind of was very sporadic because, you know, I was, you know, just trying to be careful with, you know, the things I was saying online. Yep. Um, but, you know, I don't work at top anymore, and I'm still a card collector, yep. and I guess I still feel a need to be creative. Yeah. So, it, you know, the card chat then, you know, came back, the Twitter chat, because I still, I'm still a part of this hobby, and I always want to be a part of this hobby. And this is such a fun way to collect with, connect, uh, connect with collectors. Um, but I love to write, and writing is my preferred mm -hmm. of medium. You know, people have podcasts and videos, and I, I just love the written word, writing and reading and all of it. So for me, I also wanted to find that outlet for me. And I had a blog, but I wasn't sure, like, blogging was still what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And the more I was just, like, reading things, and somebody who's also a marketer, me... Um, you know, I'm I, I'm well versed in just the different mediums of things that are out there, yeah. and I saw yeah newsletters have been becoming more popular. Yeah. Um, especially amongst journalists, um, journalists who have been laid off or anything along that nature. Um, more so paid newsletters, but I'm not really interested yeah. right now in like charging people for my card chat newsletter. Yeah. But still, I was like, this 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 could be it. This could be my outlet. I want to create a newsletter around this card chat that I create is sort of the brand name and yeah. it's you know my husband also writes for it but he can mm -hmm. a card collector and also a journalist so you know we you know decided yeah let's do this and the reception has been amazing we have hundreds of subscribers hundreds like yeah. i was shocked when with the amount of people who signed up for this newsletter and who continue to read it every week because you know, you never know, regardless of how good something could be or whatever, you could, you could put it out there and it could be like crickets and you have no yeah. idea, you know. And the fact that collectors have really embraced it, I'm so appreciative of that. And it just continues to sort of fuel me too. It's like, all right, like now, it's once a week right now, but just like, once a week right now, but it's like, now what can I write about? Now what can I do? Like, how can I take everything I've learned with my experiences of just being a collector and, and working at Tops and working at Beckett and how can I take that and put it out there for people so that they can have a better understanding of the hobby yeah and I think I'm doing that you know yeah. especially you know a couple of ones a couple of newsletters ago where you know I just I wrote about how rookie cards are done, especially for Tops Update. I think that was very informative for people because they didn't understand. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm trying to do, things like that. So that, like I said, so people, so those when they do have those questions, like why does a card company do X, Y, Z, at least even if they don't like the answer, at least maybe they have an answer for them. Yeah, and, and like you said, you've kind of merged uh, both worlds, your creative side, your writing side, and it's it's taking this form uh, with car chat even to the you know like i like we you know you said you've done this before it's not really new but you've kind of uh bumped it up a notch and then now you know not working for a card company per se you're sort of neutral and you can ask questions that maybe before like you said you kind of censored yourself now you don't you don't have to do that 
Yeah, I'm also not very, like, antagonistic. Like, that's just not in my, it's not my style. Yeah. Uh, maybe in person, if I saw you in person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more inclined to actually have, like, a more negative conversation in person. Yeah. Than I am on, like, on social media. I would prefer if we're going to have a discussion where we're not going to agree on things and perhaps, like, it's going to be for lack of a confrontational, I would prefer those conversations in person. Yeah. Um, rather than on, like, no. behind a keyboard. I feel like I'm the opposite of a lot of people. Yeah, and, and that's a great segue because I'm, you know, I was raised by my grandparents, and my my grandfather always used to tell me, like Johnny, if you can't, you know, if you can't say it to someone's face, you shouldn't be saying it. And and so I, I get what you're saying, and, and that's a good segue because um, I, I read most of your, ch- uh, you know, car chats when I see them, or I respond to them and, and give you an answer. And one thing I read, and I, I'm glad uh, I know I spoke to you a little bit before we, we, we came on about it, because I don't like to, to ambush people. That's I don't think that's a very nice uh, thing to do. Well, one of the, the questions you asked was, what do you think of all the new money? And I'm paraphrasing. It might not be exactly the word like that. Well, what do you think of the new money coming into the hobby? When I read it, and I you know, I know of you. I, I don't know you personally. Um, when I first read it, it, it kind of struck me wrong because I'm one of those. You know, I started uh, at seven years old in 1979 with a with a Topps baseball pack. Got a Reggie Jackson like the fourth card in, and the rest is history. And I'm you know I've I've been uh, uh, I've worked in a card store. I work I did my first show at, at age 15. Had a store from the age of 20 to 24, and so. Uh, you know, I too wore different hats in in the hobby, not working for companies, obviously. And so I'm always kind of welcoming to sort of everybody. I know everyone, you know, maybe doesn't think along those lines, but you know, we we we've heard the term flippers or fly by nights and invest investors, and you know, I'm I'm sure I'm forgetting some. And so when I read that, it just kind of struck a nerve because to me, sort of new money almost sounds sort of not welcoming. You know, I, I always say new hobbyists that are coming into the arena or the hobby. Um, new money almost, and I'm not saying you meant it that way, and that's what I'm going to ask you is, I, I take it, if, some, if I was new today, uh, I'm not, I'm old and, and started in 1979, but if I came into the hobby today and someone says, oh, you're new money, I wouldn't really take that with like a, a term of endearment. So, I, you know, now that I get to talk to you, just... Sort of, you've heard my side, and I've rambled on for two minutes, but sort of, you know, where you were going with that, or, or may, did I take it out of context, which I think maybe I have. So I love new people entering the hobby. Yeah. And anybody, if you, if you, if you actually go through my tweets, you'll find, like, I've been pro pretty much lots of things that are bringing new people. So, like, with Gary V entering the hobby, <laughs> I've been pro that because... I, it brings in new it brings in new people um you know whatever the little things are like if it brings in new people I'm, I'm 100% for it and mm-hmm. you know part of the, my job at Tops when you know it was not just you know with the core hobbyists and getting news out there but you know the overlying question was always how do we get new people into the hobby yeah so that was the prevailing thought how do you get new people into the hobby so when I said new money it's not so much, it wasn't, I don't, I don't, I didn't write it as a negative, but there is something happening in the hobby right now. Yeah. Oh, where no there's a lot of, there's a, a huge influx of money and it is new money because it's people who aren't necessarily, who weren't collecting six months ago. Mm-hmm. You know, six months to a year ago, these people were not in this hobby, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I, I support it, but it, the reason the question gets asked is because I tend to, like, when I usually do card chat, my questions are more neutral. I want other people to answer those questions. So it's trying to get a response out of other people. So instead of, like, what is your perception of, you know, the new money entering the hobby, you, I get now answers from both sides of it. One, people who are like, I'm cool with it. It's great to see, you know, mm-hmm. people entering the hobby. And then you have the other side of it where there's people who are like, you know, I've been collecting for so long, and now because, you know, this is new people entering the hobby or driving prices up, I can't afford anything, and, you know, there's both sides of it. Yeah. That's my goal of Bar Chat is to get people talking, to get people to 
had this conversation. So when I say new money, it's because that's what it is. It's new money. It's people who are entering the hobby for the first time who are putting their money down on, you know, singles who they, you know, they think they can invest in and mm-hmm. they will, you know, the value of them will rise later or people who are buying cases, you know, so that they can open them and flip them or just people, you know, people who are just, you know, wow, this looks like a lot of fun. And buying, going to Target and Walmart, and buying, yeah, the you know, buying up the shelves, you know. I didn't look at new money as a negative. Yeah. Um, that's just, I guess it's just not my style. I didn't see it as a negative. But, you know, I can see why, where you came from on that, but I didn't see it as a negative. I think, you know, your the sort of reaction to the term will be dictated on your experiences yeah and if you've had experiences for people who you know meant it negatively i can see why you would think that yeah i just and i i'm full disclosure i that week i went on my show and in the intro i went on a rant which i i don't normally do and i just kind of went off on a tangent i just i kind of said i don't like the term uh you know because it's sort of not that you meant it in a negative connotation but it's sort of when you know it's almost like a poker term term like new money at the table you know you're, and, you're also talking to somebody who played poker for years and years and years and so me too me new too money also means something to me as well in yeah that sense. so that's probably why because it's part of my sort of lingo, lingo. it's probably yeah. why i use the word the yeah term. but i appreciate yeah you know yeah yeah you're answering it and uh you know, knowing of you, I, I didn't really think it was meant of the way I probably took it. I just, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not something I, I will use uh, just because I feel like it's sort of uh, a, a negative. Not that you meant it that way, but I don't like to say it because, it, you know, I, I just kind of, I'm one of those guys that kind of spins it around. How would you feel? And so if I was coming into the hobby, I would just rather be... Uh, new to the hobby or a new hobbyist but again here in the way you you know like you said poker background we both uh have that and uh you know maybe it comes even from the lingo like you said so and, and no one of you i i didn't I, I really didn't think it was a, a major negative connotation but whenever i hear it and you're you know you're not the you're, you're not the, the, you didn't invent that term so i'm not trying to blame blame you um I just, me personally speaking for me, I'm not a big fan uh, of it. I try not, I, I don't use it, but, uh, but you know, again, uh, I'm, I'm glad you addressed it and, and I feel better, uh, you know, not that you needed to make me feel better, but knowing you didn't mean it in, in, in the way that I might take it when I hear it just in general. So, uh, no, I think that's fair and I appreciate yeah. you bringing that up to me because I think that, you know, in poker, new money doesn't necessarily mean something positive either, you yeah. know, um, so I think that, you know, there definitely could be a sort of negative connotation with that term. And, you know, I don't use it a lot. I I, can't, I, I feel like if I go to my Twitter and I did a search, I'd probably... I'd probably <laughs> Maybe that's the one time. Yeah, I'd that's it. it. Um, that... So it's not something I use often or, you know... Um, so, you know, it, but it'll be something, you know, I'll say this, uh, you know, I'll be mindful of going forward because I can certainly see why there is a negative connotation with it. Yeah, and, and maybe it's a little bit, I'm liquid inwardly because I, I'm old and I've been in the hobby a long time. I'm sort of looking at myself as old money, so it kind of makes me depressed. So I don't know, maybe that has something to do with it, uh, going back the, the other way uh, too. But uh, glad, I'm glad we got that uh, out of the way. One more quick break and we'll be back with more from Sue's. The Star Stock Selling Platform is live and booming, quickly becoming the premier sports card marketplace to aim to be the fastest, most efficient platform to buy or sell your cards. No insertion fees, they do all the work, cards are safely secure in their vault, and their 5% sales commission is one of the lowest in the industry. They are accepting rookie and prospect cards and now also accepting graded cards. Go check them out at StarStock.com. Sports Card Nation is back with more Susan Lugida. I always ask this next question uh, when I have a guest on that's uh, sort of a a hobby dignitary. Uh, I consider you that. Uh, And so the question is, if you could have, you know, it's the genie in the bottle, the magic wand, but you only get one hobby wish. You can change anything in the hobby. 
uh, but only one thing, you know, uh, what I know I'm throwing this and putting you on the hot seat, but what would you, what would that one thing be? I wish there was enough product for everybody without the cards losing their value. Yeah, that's that, I love that answer. I'm not just saying that. That's that's a great answer, and and I like how you you know you 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 put the the clarifier on it too because we remember those days when there was plenty of product and and what happened there too. And uh, so I agree with you. I I think, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we talked a little bit, you mentioned about it, you know, whenever I go to Target Walmart, obviously I head to the car aisle and see if anything's there. And here in the Syracuse area, I mean, it's just like, I, I use the term piranhas. I mean, there's the empty display boxes and there's nothing there. And, uh, you know, I can see, uh, you know, someone being disappointed, um, and I'm also a free market enterprise person, so I don't necessarily get mad. I, the word I use is disappointed that I don't get to buy nothing to open. But at the same time, someone got there first, and and to the victor goes the the spoil. So, but like you said, that that would be definitely a huge difference maker because you you know you see all the posts just as I do online where people are are upset or complaining or other people are posting pictures of their shopping cart with, you know, three dis display racks of, of various products checking out, and uh, that's going to be products someone else is not going to have the opportunity to purchase. So I, I I think that's a huge, you know, and you're the first, you know, I've asked that question probably eight, nine times on the show, and you're the I, I might be the best answer because I think it's a huge yeah, issue, uh, if you want to call it an issue, and uh and the fact that you clarified it uh, as well, a, a good answer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably the thing on top of my mind because yeah. like, I'm like, hmm, I'm like, I wonder if I could take a ride to Target and see if they have anything. First of all, I've been to Target probably once since this whole pandemic. Started, yeah. So the odds of me going to Target are still very low because <laughs> I don't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but too, I'm also like, yeah. Well, what's even going to be on the shelf? Like, why am I going to take a trip for no reason? It's not like Target's around the corner for me. It's still like a 10-minute drive. But yeah. still, it's like I'm going to drive there just to look at an empty shelf and then, like, <laughs> literally get back in my car and drive home. Yeah, I've got it down where I'm not going there even just to check. I'm going there for something for the house, you know. Uh, and, and then when I'm there, it's sort of like, all right, let's check. Probably not going to be nothing, but let's take a flyer and, you know. Oh, of course and you maybe. Have to check. <laughs> Yeah, yep, yeah, no doubt. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get you to quit your your current job. You're at, you're at Culture Fly, but you ever see yourself maybe getting back in? Uh, you're in the hobby. I don't want to say back in the hobby, but you know, working in the hobby again. Uh, you know, what for whoever? You know, whether it be you know a grading company or a, a card company. You ever see that day where maybe you return in, in that form or fashion? I'll never say never. There you I'll go. It, you know, that's a, <laughs> like, who knows? I still have, you know, probably like 20, 25 years left in my working life. So, yeah. What can happen? Yeah. Now and then. Yep. I always leave the door open just a, a little crack. You never you never know, and that's a, a, a great answer. Well, Suze, I, I appreciate your time and, and coming on the show. It uh, uh, means a lot to me. I know uh, listeners uh, as well. I know you're very busy. I always give the guests, uh, whoever they are, kind of the, the final say, the last word, any socials you want to give out, websites, talk about, you know, where people can see what you're doing, card chat, uh, you know, the floor is yours. Yeah, so you can follow me on social media, on Twitter. Twitter is where I mostly am. It's at Yankschick, Y-A-N-X-C-H-I-C-K. And then for the sign-up for the newsletter, you go to ch cardchat.substack.com. Yeah, and I'll put those links in the show notes as well. So if you miss it uh, on the air, you, you can just go to the show notes and it'll be uh, right there and, and, and ready for you. So, Suze, again, thank you. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, you know, as a fellow New Yorker, I, I, I have family there still as well. So I, I know, uh, you know, how it is. It's actually uh, gotten better, but uh, still, you know, still not out of the woods. So stay safe, stay, stay healthy to you and your family. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. One of One Card Shop offers a tremendous breaking experience, great customer service, and they're constantly pulling fire. Steve and his family take care of you like one of their own and treat you right. 
Anyone can break, but no one treats you like one of one. Come check them out on Instagram at one underscore of underscore one underscore card underscore shop. For all the hot breaks, get a gold mailer headed your way. All right, we have a winner in this week's $25 free break credit to one of one card shop giveaway. And the winner is at card underscore a underscore holic, aka Brian from Montana. So at cardaholic, Brian from Montana, congratulations, you got $25 free break credit. Courtesy of 101 Card Shop. Let me tell you about Iron Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're your number one source for all your PSA and now SGC submissions. They offer various service levels at the lowest prices around. They even provide the card savers your cards need to be submitted at no extra charge. Their elite status helps improve turnaround times. And their chat rooms keep you abreast of your subs and the status of your cards. What are you waiting for? Contact Rob on Facebook on Iron Sports Card Group. That's Iron Sports Card Group on Facebook. Or get a hold of Rob on Twitter at Iron Sports Cards. All one word, at Iron Sports Cards. They'll take care of you. All right, that does it for episode 90 of the Sports Car Nation podcast. As always, I start by thanking you, the listener, those of you giving us your time when you don't have to. Without you, we don't exist, and I don't get to do something I really have a passion for and enjoy. And you don't get to hear the great guests, such as today's guest, Suze, and uh, was happy to have her on the show. And as we all know, she's a great advocate and ambassador for the hobby uh even even in a way in a weird sort of way more so now uh you know that she does she's not at tops that uh she can kind of say more and do more and uh, uh it's refreshing and i'm sure for her as well so i want to thank her for coming on the show uh, again as well uh, next week's guest is matt greeny he is the CEO, if you will, of MySlabs.com, a site that sells graded cards. And more specifically, it's where you can list your graded cards in wax for sale. And I love the site. I've done well the last two or three months. I've moved a lot of my eBay stuff uh, as far as graded goes and wax goes off eBay to MySlabs. They have a 1% selling fee. A lot better uh, than the big bad eBay. And uh, we're going to have Matt on to talk about a site, how it all came about. Talk about those low fees. And I'm going to I'm gonna thank him on the air. Uh, save me a lot, a lot of eBay fees uh, with the sales I've made on my slab. So definitely tune in uh, to hear uh, from Matt. Another thing I want to talk about, I can't go over all the juicy details uh, just yet. Just sort of a teaser. Myself and Drew Herndon from Let Me Get That Potograph, as you may or may not know, are pretty good friends. And uh, we're talking about doing a show uh, together, a live video show. And uh, that's in the early works. And uh, it's going to be the kind of show where we uh, do panels, whether it be about grading, kids in the hobby, one topic, uh, scheduled guests that come on and... uh, it's going to be fun. It's something we both wanted to do sort of individually. And then in talking to them, let's like combine forces and really tackle these issues. We have decided on a name for that program. But at this time, I'm going to keep that under my hat. So uh, look forward to that in the next month or two as we uh, launch that. And uh, we're, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for them, but I think I can. We're both excited uh, for that. I think uh, you guys out there, when it comes to the content creation field, are going to enjoy it. And we're going to bring you some great guests on video. And uh, So look forward to that very soon. 
And speaking of coming soon, I'm not sure what episode he's going to appear on, but here in the next probably few weeks, uh, it's going to be the first guest I have where you probably will not know the guest's name. And I know that sounds weird. He's from more of the Instagram side of things where he's very well known. He's known as the card killer. He does his own cards. He's definitely uh, unique. He also hails from New York City. I got a soft place in my heart for for my New York City peeps, to be honest with you. But uh, Card Killer is going to come on. He just did a charity sale of a Pat Tillman custom, and uh, we're going to talk to him. Uh, you know, he doesn't do a ton of these interviews, but uh, he, he, you know, kind of reached out to me. Said he listens to the show all the time. I knew about him, and I'm going to be honest with you. My perception of him changed from what I thought of him when I first saw him to what he's, you know, I don't want to say morphed into, but, you know, developed into. And he's an artist in his own right and uh, doing great things and and fun things uh, with cards. Definitely uh, (laughs) great with with storytelling and setting things up. Card Killer from Instagram. Some of you may know who I'm talking about, and if you don't, Go check him out on Instagram. In, in the next few weeks, he's going to be on the show and uh, looking forward uh, to that conversation. Maybe we can get him to spill the beans on his true identity. So, And and the last thing I want to close with, guys, this was episode, obviously, uh, 90. We're approaching episode 100. That was a big milestone when I started this. I, you know, I had no idea whether we're going to make it to 100 or not. Uh, looks like we will, God willing, and we're going to celebrate that. We're going to do something. I haven't announced this officially yet, so I'm going to announce it right here in the closing. Episode 100 is going to be the first ever live episode of Sports Car Nation. It's, uh, unless something gets derailed, uh, the date is going to be Saturday, October 31st. Halloween It's going to be in the afternoon. We're also going to put the podcast out in audio form as well. Uh, I've locked up the guests that I wanted to have on episode 100. There's going to be three guests all on at the same time uh, via StreamYard. And uh, again, it will be simulcast. We're going to give away a lot of stuff, okay, as we customarily do. But we're going to celebrate in style. It's going to be our celebration, but you're going to get the gift. So, uh, as I've said before... We are giving away $100 cash or PayPal, if you will. The winner is going to get that PayPal. Uh, some of these sponsors are going to come up, uh, thankfully, uh, and I appreciate them with some prizes. I know uh, Pastime Marketplace has already committed uh, to give away two of their great uh, waterproof, dustproof, airtight, uh, tremendous cases. And uh, so uh, two listeners are going to get... Uh, a pastime marketplace case, 100 bucks cash. We're going to give away cards, probably some graded subs. I mean, it's going to be a bonanza. You know, we do episode 100, uh, right, and uh, you're going to be the benefactor uh, of it. So we're, we're counting down now with, with episode 90 being in the books. So we got nine episodes till we hit the big 100. Again, live on Halloween, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So, uh, again, I'll just close with uh, thank you, uh, everybody, from my guests to the sponsors, uh, to you, the listener, ultimately. uh, None of this matters without you being there for the show. And uh, I can't thank you enough. And, uh, you know, be safe, uh, stay healthy, and we'll see you in seven days. You've been listening to the Sports Card Nation podcast. Join host John Newman next week as he gives you another jam-packed episode of all things related to the sports card hobby. And a little extra fun, too. Don't forget to check out the show on Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast.